People, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning, you know who it is, Arsenio Buck, reporting live from Bangkok. Welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show. As you hear, my voice may sound just a little bit better, but you know what, I still just got that problem right in my throat, so I'm still contemplating getting a little bit of medication just to get rid of it, but what am I supposed to tell the doctor, you know? I just don't understand what am I supposed to tell the doctor. Am I supposed to tell my my throat is sore? Probably not. I'm still trying to figure it all out, but as you can hear, it still doesn't sound like I'm at 100%, so I do apologize for that, but it's not going to stop me from delivering my message today. So remember, yesterday I gave you a poem. Yesterday I gave you what Henry Ford did and made up in his mind. Just a machinist working as a laborer and ended up amounting more than 1 billion and counting to this day. The man's been dead for over 70 years. And you know what's so amazing about this story is that this, pretty much, he had a confrontation with himself, like the story I'm going to tell you today. Now, remember, none of us know what's hidden within us. It's just like, A lot of people have said there are some people that see greatness within you that you do not see in yourself. The forces that lie dormant within you, yourself, you do not even know the capacity of your achievement. And you'll never know until you come in contact with that particular, I guess you could say, stimulus. And so this stimulus could be a mirror. So what I'm going to tell you about today is a a man. Now, Napoleon Hill talked about this man, right? And Napoleon Hill said he had a prime example of how the unimportant experiences in life can also turn out to be some of the most important of them all. And it's crazy because he's actually, uh, he talked about this because this is, this actually relates to men and women within the world today. So you know what? A long time ago, he was engaged in some work in Chicago. Uh, as a character analysis, right? So one day, a man, okay, he presented himself in the office and asked for an interview. And as he looked up to greet him, he said, you know what? I have come to see a man who wrote this particular book. And as he removed that little particular copy, it says self-confidence right from his pocket, okay? He said it had been written many years previously. And of course, Napoleon Hill was the one that actually wrote it. And it's crazy because the man was like, you know what? It must have been fate or the hand of fate in his hand that slipped that book into his hand before him committing suicide in Lake Michigan. See, it's crazy because when we have these... Sorry, obviously you see that my throat's a little jacked up. So, or obviously you hear. But you know what? It's crazy because this little book, it actually came into the hands of this man before he ended up committing suicide and see a lot of things happen to us in life it could be a person it could be a message it could be something you read it could be something that just comes to you right before you making a very very rash decision so as this man was speaking about you know what this book actually changed my life i just want to give thanks to the man i really want to interview the man etc etc napoleon hill at that given moment he was actually evaluating the man from head to toe. And he want, he didn't want to be frank at that given moment, but he was just going to tell him, you know what, I, I cannot help you with anything that you're looking for right now. So it's crazy because that glassy stare in his eyes, the lines of discouragement in his face, the posture of his body, the 10 days growth of a beard on his face, the nervous manner, okay, It all conveyed his impression to him as pure hopelessness. But you know what? He didn't have in his heart, Napoleon Hill didn't have in his heart to literally just state, hey, you know what? I cannot help you. He just let the man just keep on talking. So the man actually went on to talk about, you know, he invented something. He uh, invested an entire fortune into a company before the First World War began. And when it actually began, it was impossible for him to get all his raw materials back from the factory, et cetera, et cetera. Therefore, everything failed. So the loss of money and the loss of his money broke his heart. And so and so disturbed his mind that he left his wife 
and children. And so this ended up actually, you know, ensuing the fact that he was going to take his own life because he attached. Remember, I was talking about in Tony Robbins podcast, probably a little bit. uh, What is it? Last year that so many people attach their identity to money. And so when you do that and you lose the money, you lose all sense of your identity. You lose all sense of your manlyhood. You lose all sense of what you are as a human being. So it's crazy because after he finished, Napoleon Hill quoted, he said, you know what? I have listened to you with a great deal of interest. And I wish that there was something which I could do to help you, but there is absolutely nothing. So the man became pale. Looked like he was laying in a coffin at the time. That's what Napoleon Hill said. And he said, you know what? That settles it. And Napoleon Hill, and it's crazy because right when he said that settles it, it's kind of like, well, he made up in his mind that he's going to jump into Lake Michigan and kill himself. But Napoleon said, you know what? While there is nothing that I can do for you, there is a man in this building to whom I will introduce you, if you wish, who can help regain your lost fortune and put you back on your feet again. And the man stood up and he said, oh, thank you, goodness. For God's sake, lead me to this man. So he did. That little phrase indicated that there was still a spark of hope left within that man's breastplate. So he actually took him by the arm and led him down to the laboratory where all his psychological testing, character and analysis and everything were being conducted. And you know what? He unveiled a curtain and behind that curtain was a mirror. And that mirror, Napoleon Hill pointed his finger at the glass and said, there stands the man to whom I promise to introduce you. There is the only man in the world who can put you back on your feet again. And unless you sit down and become acquainted with that man, as you never became acquainted with him before, you might as well just punch a hole in Lake Michigan because you will be no value to yourself or to the world until you know this man better. You know what? The man stepped back. You know, and he rubbed his hands over his bearded face and studied himself from, you know, you know, just from head to toe for a few moments. And he started to sob. And it's crazy because at that given time, the man left and Napoleon Hill never expected to see him again. Never. But you know what? He seemed to be not only down, but almost out after giving that. But amazingly, as all transformations happen, just a few days later, he met that man on the street again. His transformation had been so complete that he could hardly recognize him. He was walking briskly with his head titled back instead of his chin being at his chest. That old shifting nervous posture of his body was gone. He was dressed with new clothes from head to foot. He looked prosperous. He felt prosperous. And it's crazy because the man saw him and the man said, and quote, I was just on my way to your office to bring you the good news. I went out that very day that I left your office, a down and out tramp. And despite my appearance, he sold himself at a salary of $3,000 a year. Think of it, a man $3,000 a year at the time. And his employer advanced him money, enough with which to buy himself new clothes As you can see for yourself, he also advanced me some money to send home to my family. And I am once more on the road to success. It seems like a dream. And when I think that only a few days ago, I had lost hope and faith and courage and was actually contemplating suicide. I was coming to tell you that one of these days when you are least expecting me, I will pay you another visit and I will be a successful man. I will bring you a check signed in blank and made payable to you. And you may fill in the amount because you have saved me from myself by introducing me to myself. That self, which I never knew until you stood me in front of that looking glass and pointed out the real me. As that man turned around and departed and walked down the street. For the first time, he saw that man. For the first time. He saw him. See, the man that actually walked into his office as a victim, that wasn't the real man. But the man that he actually saw on the streets, that was the first time he had ever seen him. And so it's amazing what strength and power and possibility lie hidden within the mind of man. 
who has never discovered the value of self-reliance. We have all been through this before in our lives. We have all reached those moments to whereas we wanted to give up. I did three years ago. I've lost everything, all living as human being. Until I was, I was in that taxi ride and the taxi was going around in circles accumulating money. Although he didn't want to send me directly, he drove in a massive circle, probably a 10 km circle, so he could get more money. And he dropped me off at the school, and I just remember sending a message to my best friend in New York. And it was a message so terrifying that he hurried up and contacted my, my mother and said, you know what, something is really wrong with Arsenio. And I got dropped off at the school, and I just sat down with the laptop in front of my face, and I said, I got to pull myself together. Go to this job interview. I went to the job interview, and I said, you know what, I feel so good about this job. Because there was another African brother there. And I was like, you know what? If they give you the job over me, I feel great. Because, of course, at the time, this is when I was dealing with a whole lot of racism. And then, of course, a week later, I went to another job interview. Or less than a week later, I went to another job interview. And I got a job. And I was able to get out of one of the worst provinces in all of Thailand. Just north of Ayutthaya. In a really small, remote province called Ang Tong. Awful place. And I knew I needed to get out of there. If I would have stayed there... Who knows where I would be right now? But when I did, all the opportunities started coming to me. The English camps, whereas it resonates so much within me to meet some of the most wonderful students in Northeast Thailand. And then I got another part-time job. Now, of course, that job that I got that particular day, whereas I was able to move from one province, one province to another, yes, it was great at the time. But the thing is, it established the whole idea behind it was it established that self-reliance within me again. I lost all courage and hope as man. I let people point fingers in my face and tell me that I wasn't good enough because I was a colored child. But that moment when I actually got that job and said, you know what, everything's going to be all right. And when I had that laptop sitting right in front of me outside, sweating like a pig, waiting for people to come, I said, you know what, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And especially after the text message I got from my friend, he's like, what the hell are you talking about? He just went crazy. And that was the message I needed. He's like, there are so many people back home that love you. Just because you're not experiencing that in that particular country, maybe you should just come back home. Of course, he was so worried at the fact what my message said. He was like, please just come home. But I said, you know what? I'm going to fight through. I'm not going to give up. And that was the biggest turning point in my life because right then going forward, I was an entire different person. I knew my true value. I didn't know my true value as I do today, but I did at the moment to get me out of that contemplation. That same thing man went through. That same thing the man went through that stepped into Napoleon Hill's office as a victim saying all that has went bad in his life and him even leaving his children and his wife. That same moment, we've all been through that. But you know what? Look yourself in the mirror. Go to your mirror and look yourself and start look at yourself. And you need to start stating all the beauty and all the goodness within you. Because a lot of people we just do not look at it that way. Some of us we're going to look in the mirror, you might even break out into hives, you might start crying, you might start whimpering, who knows. But we're terrified of looking at ourselves in the mirror. Why? Because the image that's in the mirror is of someone who has told us who we are rather than us believing who we are. See, when I look myself in the mirror now, I'm saying, damn, that is a chocolate brother right there. You look good. Three years ago, I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was like, oh, I'm just a black man who is hopeless in a country that seemingly hates black people until I changed it. And you could change that, too. You're going to have to have that confrontation. Whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's in a week, whether it's in a month, have the confrontation sooner than later. Because once you do, that change, that tipping point, that turning point is going to happen. So, with that being said, people, that is the end of today's podcast. That's part two of this bad habit. We got one more until we get into discontentment. So, please stay tuned for all of that. For all my TEDx listeners, please Hold your horses. I'm coming back. I'm coming back, and I'm coming back with authority. 
And so you guys, if you have any questions, obviously you already know how to get in contact with me. And for everyone who's listening all around the world, thank you. So much appreciation. So much gratitude is being spread throughout the world. And the message is being given to so many of you in so many countries scattered across this gorgeous planet we live on. And until then, again, you know how to get in contact with me. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. This is your host, Arsenio, as usual, over and out.